Last week, I talked to you about organizing kids. This week, I wanna to talk to you about the second optional organizing category, which is photos and memorabilia. We've been talking about the research Organize 365 has done about what does it mean to be organized and divided it into four essential categories, personal organizing, family and communal space organizing, storage organizing, and paper organizing. Essential for all Americans to either do or choose not to do, but consciously choose not to do it, just abdicate it without knowing it's a category. Last week we talked about kids. It's optional. If you don't have kids, you don't need to organize them. If you do, it's kind of not optional. This week is entirely, completely optional. I think the only reason we even have it in here is because it's definitely my passion project. And that is organizing your photos and memorabilia. So for 17 years, I was a creative memories consultant and I helped hundreds of people get their photos organized. I personally have over a hundred photo albums. I know, I know, it's a lot of, it's a passion project. It's not essential. You don't need to do it. I was looking at my photo albums last week though because I'm going to be talking to you on the podcast coming up about my great grandmother and how she went to Kent State Normal School and my grandmother who went to Kent State. And I was like, why was it called normal school? What did that mean? And so I've done some research on that. You'll be hearing about that coming up um, in a couple of weeks. But I went into my scrapbook to see what my mom had written about my grandmother and my great grandmother. And then I started going back to my great great grandmother and my and I have in these photo albums pictures from the late 1800s and information about people from the late 1800s. And in that same family lineage, there is someone in our family who has traced our our family all the way back to England and we I'm a daughter of the American Revolution, meaning that my family was here before America was a country in that lineage. I love that kind of stuff. I love to hear about my history. It's my history. It doesn't really matter to you. Like you're, it's not really a big deal for you, but I love it. Like I love to hear where I came from and what people in my family have done and where they lived. And uh, it's, it's just fascinating. Like there's a farm in upper Ohio that my family had that the state bought and now the Ohio Turnpike goes through where uh, one of my family members' farms used to be. Again, totally not interesting to you, interesting to me. I did know that story. And then when my father passed away and I went through the safe, I found the, um, the plot that showed you all of that. And then the letter from the state and all of that. I found all of the stuff where the state actually bought the land from our family to put the Ohio Turnpike through there. And I put that information in one of our uh, leatherette, it's not real leather, but it looks like leather, one inch memorabilia binders. And then all of the photos I have are in Creative Memories photo albums. So we have a photo and memorabilia course that walks you through how I preserve that kind of stuff. I've been doing it for decades. I love it. It's definitely a passion project of mine. It is completely optional. However, since you're still listening, it is optional, but it is so impactful, you guys. You do not have to go to the nth degree like me and have every single photo catalog and hundreds of albums. Like it's overkill. I understand. My kids are not going to carry on with it. I don't care. I like looking at them. But even one album, even one simple $35 memorabilia binder where you put the sheet protectors in and you put all this stuff in and you give it to someone as a gift. When you give people the gift of their history, their photos, their certificates, their articles they've written, articles they've been in, schoolwork that they've done, sports accomplishments that they've done, business accolades that they've earned. It is the fastest way to raise someone's self-esteem, confidence, self-worth. Like, I know it's just papers, but when you are feeling down and you could find a note that your parents wrote to you and they may have passed years and years and years ago. I have every single card and letter my mom and dad have ever written me all the way back to when I went away to camp in high school. I have all of them. I have them in a box. I have every single card Greg's ever given me. It's in the bottom drawer in my dresser and the dresser drawer is so full because some of them just go love Greg, but some of them have cute little notes in them. And I have at times gone through and just started reading those cards. You know, when you find these boxes, these little treasures of notes from people who have passed or people who mean a lot to you or accomplishments that you really worked really hard to earn, the world doesn't care, but you care and it's your history. So even if you put these in a nice box or make one one inch memorabilia binder for yourself, 
Uh, it's never too late to make someone a baby album. When Greg and I got married, I took all of his, he, run, he won cross country, his team won cross country when he was in high school, his junior year. And I found all the clippings and I put them all in an album and gave it to him. And you know, cried like a baby. He just loved it. He just, who doesn't like to see their accomplishments, their life's work in a nice presentation? Why are you keeping this stuff if it's just in a box in the storage room? That's the thing. Like, how are you enjoying these memories if they're just in storage? Get them out of the store, get them into your living room where you are living, where you can enjoy them. And the truth is when you give a gift like this, it is gonna be, a, it's gonna go over really, really well. It's gonna be great. Now it's a good time to start for the holidays if you wanna make any of these. Um, causes a lot of discussion, a lot of memories, a lot of storage, and it, and it does go on a bookshelf. It does go on a bookshelf for years where people will not look at it. But if you make this for your spouse, if you make it for your kids, when they are having a down season, they will pull those off. I watched my kids throughout their elementary and high school years go over every couple years and pull an album off of the bookshelf and start leafing through that booklet. And it really does increase their self-esteem and help them relive the happy memories because we don't put sad memories in there the happy memories from our personal history that really bolster us to go for it. So it is optional. Obviously, it's kind of a passion project of mine. Organize 365 can help you get those organized. This is often what you tend to organize in the second half of your life. And it's a fun project. It could take a short amount of time if you just pull out your favorites and just make them in a random book. Doesn't have to be in chronological order, doesn't matter. If you choose to do as I've done and, and turn it into like a whole catalog history of your life, it'll take years but it's a fun project to undertake and we'd love to help you do that. Okay, so what's going on in Organize 365 this week? Well, today I am doing planning day, love planning day, for everyone who has a business Friday work box from 10 to two. If you have not registered, registration is closed. You cannot buy this on demand after the fact, so definitely write yourself a little note that you wanna join us on September 9th. This is what will supercharge your Friday work box going forward. Second, we really are getting to the end of the Embrace Last Call. On Tuesday, we will be shipping out all the packages. Last week, we already shipped out the International. We'll be shipping out all of those that are going domestically. This Tuesday, you will be able to still register and we'll ship out the packages onesie, twosies after that. So you, if you've been on the fence and you're like, I don't know, do it. It will be awesome. I cannot wait to spend the, the day with you, two days virtually at the end of June. Join us for Embrace. And then the last thing, I have a new partnership to announce. I've been working with ADHD Online, which is a great company um, in the United States and they help people get their ADHD diagnosis and um, additional services that you need, especially as an adult. There really just are not a lot of good services for adults who have ADHD other than medication management. And ADHD Online has webinars of education and other things that they offer. And I've been doing a couple of these. So I've already done two webinars. This upcoming Wednesday, I'll be doing my third. And then at the end of the month, I'll be doing my fourth. You can find out more information on Instagram by going to my link tree or on the Organize 365 website. Oh, you may not know this. If you go to the Organize 365 website under the events tab, there's an Organize 365 calendar. On that Organize 365 calendar, we have these ADHD online webinars that you could sign up to go to. We have our planning days, we have Embrace, we have Teacher Kip, we have all the dates. Like you can get out your calendar and open up my calendar and just like put all these things on your calendar so that you don't miss a thing. We would love to have you participate. Have a great week, everyone.